My name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this webinar on Making Problems Disappear with Boris Continuum Complete. What I want to talk about today is to showcase 10 filters and transitions that can help fix problem footage, running Boris Continuum Complete version 7, running inside Final Cut Pro 7. Specifically, I want to focus on the following effects. BCC wire removal, which shows automatic motion tracking, smooth tone, swish pan, which is a transition, Film effects, dissolve glow, which is also a transition, lens blur and lens transition, chroma key studio and motion key, which is very close to magic, and this one I'll show using manual motion tracking, and we'll wrap up with a three-way color grade showing automatic motion tracking. Motion tracking is built into many of the filters inside Boris Continuum Complete. So with that as a preamble, let's get started. I'm inside Final Cut Pro 7, and this is a fashion commercial that we're running. And if I run from the very beginning, hit the space bar and play this through, we have our star talking, except right there, we've got a little bit of a skin blemish. Now, if this is a horror film, I wouldn't particularly care, but we're talking fashion, and it would be really nice if we could make that itty-bitty little blemish disappear. But the problem is there's no painting tools inside Final Cut. So there it will harness the power of Boris. Watch this instead. We have her talking, and when she turns her head, look at that. It's gone. We made a problem disappear. How do we do it? Well, I took the exact same footage. I took the exact same footage. Here it is. And I've put a razor blade cut, letter B, to select the razor blade. And, and I just cut right here because I want to apply a filter to this portion of a clip and not this portion of a clip. So I select the portion I want to apply the filter to, and I go up to the Effects menu, which is where all effects inside Final Cut are located, and go to Video Filters. Inside Video Filters, we'll go to BCC7 Keys Mat, and we'll select Wire Remover. Now, this is not necessarily the most intuitive choice, because it doesn't look like we're removing a wire, but this is the filter that we want to use in this case. Double-click the clip to load it into the viewer, and go to the Filters tab. What wire removal allows me to do is to remove a portion of the image by blending other elements around. And the portion that we're going to be adjusting is highlighted by this red stripe. Now the red stripe is turned on by going to the View pop-up. Render shows us the finished result. The Preview area shows us the area that we're going to be changing. And so the first thing that I want to be able to do is to select where that area is. I want to put this red stripe directly over the little dot on her nose. So I click on the cross here, because that's how you change positions, for end point number one. That controls this part of the line. And I'm going to click where I want the red line to start. Then click the cross here for end point number two. Click hold, and I'm going to drag it so the red line, which is what we're going to be removing, preview of it at least, is right across where I want to do the patch. We'll increase the width slightly to make it so we can cover it. And then we'll feather this just a bit, soften the edges. I could soften it a lot or soften it a little. I'll leave a little bit of feathering. We'll make the final adjustment when we're done. So this says that's the area that I want to remove, or at least hide. But she turns her head, and the camera is tilting. And oh, how are we going to do this? Because I don't really want to spend the time keyframing every single frame here. Well, we're going to take advantage of a feature that's built into this called the motion tracker. And we're going to track on the fly, which means that it will automatically generate motion tracking as we go through the clip. So I'll move my playhead to the very beginning of the clip, hit the up arrow key to position it there, and two motion trackers show up. There's motion tracker number one <laughs> and motion tracker number two. We need to get these positioned. And to do that, I'm going to scroll farther down here. And you see there's two twirl downs. The first twirl down is for motion tracker number one. The tracker keyframe, that's the tracker center keyframe. I click the plus key. The plus key allows me to position a motion tracker. Now, the way you decide how to position a motion tracker is you look for something that's got an area of high contrast. I wouldn't position it in the middle of her cheek. There's nothing that the tracker can lock onto. You want to position it on something that's in the frame the whole time. And there's a really nice high contrast area, which is this part of her nose. So I'm going to just simply click right here and put the motion tracker right on that part of her nose. And we'll select tracker number two by scrolling farther down. 
and select Motion Tracker 2, select the keyframe, and put tracker number 2 right about here. Now we've applied the Motion Tracker. The way that we get the Motion Tracker to work is we go up to the Mark menu, and under Mark we go to Play. We need to force Final Cut to play every frame. And when it does, it creates a motion track as she moves her head and tilts down. And that green bar indicates the status of the track. So I've now motion tracked this shot. And because I locked onto two high contrast points, I've got a really nice track going on here. Press the up arrow key to go back to the beginning of the clip. So now I've got my motion track done. How do I tie the motion track into this preview area? And to do that, we say we apply it under the apply under the motion tracker we apply it the first track to endpoint 1 and the second track gets applied to endpoint 2 so each motion tracker is applied to the be to that little red line that we put on the red line indicates the area that we're covering and the left hand side of the line which is point 1 gets tracked to motion track point 1 and the right side of the line gets tracked to motion track tracker 2 so now let's go back to switch out of the track on the fly because we're done except the line moved why because it perfectly aligns itself with the motion trackers well the motion tracker is not the base of her nose we need to dial in an offset the offset allows me to position where that motion this preview area gets set in relationship to the motion tracker so let's just pull this up a bit and I'm on track number one we'll pull that to there pull that up over a little bit Sometimes it's easier if I just put it in the middle of the clip. There we go. And then we go down to motion tracker number two, dial in an offset. You want to try to keep this area as small as possible because then it's easier to hide the patch because you're affecting less of the image. And we'll just dial this down just a little bit and move it down just a hair. And again, we'll make it a little bit wider. Good. Now we have three things we could do. We could just cover it. We could mask it, which just simply puts a black mask on top. Or we could clone the area. You could take a look at each one of these. The one that looks the best for me is cover. But let's switch out of preview and let's switch it to render. And by switching to cover, notice that you can't see it anymore. Hit the, the down arrow key to move to the beginning of the clip. I'm going to use the arrow keys rather than play it in real time. And notice that as she turns, that little skin blemish is totally gone.